I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Today's topic is intumescent fire stop collars. Now, I know this sounds like a boring topic, but we got the chance to use the boring companies, not a flamethrower, to do some crazy testing on these, and it was a lot of fun. So before I get into all the specifics of the testing we did, let me start off by explaining why we're even looking at this. As a home inspector, when I'm inspecting a house or I'm looking at the garage, house, fire separation wall, I'm checking to make sure that you won't have a fire quickly spread to the inside of the house. I want to make sure that everything's intact and it all looks good, no big holes in the fire separation wall. And also if there's any pipes coming through the wall, like for a radon system, or a whole house vacuum system, I want to make sure that that pipe is adequately protected so if there is a fire in the garage, it's not going to quickly lick through that plastic pipe and spread to the inside of the house. Now, there, there's the, building, the residential building code doesn't specifically address that. They say that those types of pipes and penetrations and wires and ducts and all that need to be protected by an approved method, but they don't go on to say what's, what exactly that is. Now, the standard here in Minnesota is an intumescent fire stop collar. It, uh, it's a device that looks like this. This is made by Nelson Fire Stop Products. This is a collar for a three inch pipe. And the idea is it goes around the pipe and then if there's a fire, this stuff's gonna expand. It's got this, I don't know what's in here, but it's got something and it expands like crazy and it's supposed to close that hole. And that, that's what intumescent means. So, I wanted to do some testing on these. I wanted to show how they actually work and why we might recommend these as home inspectors. And to do this testing, I was able to get my hands on a, a, a flamethrower. I guess it's called a not a flamethrower. And we ended up building a nice model for this, a, a, nice, a nice wall, thanks to a couple of inspectors on my team, Joe and Matt. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are awesome. You guys rock. I appreciate all the time that you guys put into putting all this together and helping me do all the testing. Uh, it, it, it was a lot of fun. So we put this wall together, and we had a bunch of pipes coming through the wall, and we recorded everything. Now, my idea was that uh, this, this whole video was going to be that recording, but it was a really windy day, and there was a neighbor mowing their lawn, like, all day while we were doing the testing. So the audio turned out pretty terribly. So I, I'm just gonna have to narrate from home, but I still have all the footage. So we did four different tests. We meant to do three different tests, but during one of the tests, we ended up learning a lot about these fire stop collars. It, uh, it's new information that I was not aware of, and it, it changes my recommendations for home inspections. So for the first test, number one, we did fire stop foam. Uh, Great Stuff makes this product. Great Stuff makes expanding foam sold in a can, and they also have a fire stop product. It's, it's meant to seal penetrations in fire separation walls. We, we tried using that to see how that would turn out. We tried doing another one with no foam at all, just to show what happens if, they, if there's nothing there. And then for the last test, we meant to do an intubescent fire stop collar to show how that works. But we ended up having to repeat that test, so it's a good thing we had a couple of extra callers. And I thought, I thought the results were pretty, pretty cool. So let's jump right into it. Here's Joe and I introducing ourselves. We're like a couple of boneheads. We didn't talk about what we're wearing before we do this. We both wore the exact same shirt. Awesome. And we start out by Joe burning the heck out of this thing. Now remember, test number one, we've got fire stop foam. We're going to see how this works out. So I'll admit, this part's actually pretty boring. It goes on for about five minutes straight with Joe taking the blowtorch, moving it to this side, that side, and I'm filming on the back side the entire time. And then at about five minutes in, it gets exciting. So you can see there that once the pipe melted off and fell to the ground, flames really started coming through the hole. That's where we cut the test off. For the next test, we did about the same thing, but no fire stop and no fire foam at the opening. And we let this test go until flames started coming through the hole. Now, the, the pipe melted off, and it was, it was uneventful until that happened. But once, once flames started coming around the edges and you had fire inside the wall, we said, okay, end of test, we're good, that's a fail. 
Now for test number three, we use the Intimus and Firestop collar. We attach it to the wall, but take a close up look at how we attach this. We used drywall screws to do this. Now we just kind of figured we're just gonna hold it in place. It's gonna expand and it's gonna do its thing, but we hadn't really thought this through because with the drywall screws, it, it doesn't fasten it very well to the wall. And as soon as that foam starts expanding, it just pushes that whole fire stop collar right off the wall. So instead of sealing the pipe shut, instead of all that pressure being applied directly to the pipe and sealing it off, the, a ton of that pressure goes back against the drywall and the thing expands right off the wall. And we let this test go. It, it, it held up a lot longer. I mean, I think we let this go for like 15 minutes or something. But still, in the end, it was just a huge mass of burned char material. I don't even know what to call it. And it didn't really stop the fire like it was supposed to. So that was a fail on our part. We didn't attach it the way we should have. Thankfully, we had some extra fire stop collars and we did it again, but this time we attached it the way that the manufacturer said we're supposed to. We used the equivalent of toggle bolts. We actually used bolts that went all the way through and then we put nuts on the backside with fender washers and we got dramatically different results. You can see the fire stop collar stayed in place this time and it actually starts expanding against the drywall and it's got nowhere to go but in. So it starts crushing that pipe and you can see, I, I didn't speed up this one, I just showed different clips. The pipe completely closed off. Here's a view of the backside of it. You can see there's barely anything coming through at this point and eventually it sealed itself off to absolutely nothing and we kept a flame on there for about another five ten minutes and nothing at all happened so at that point we called the test done and we called this one a success because it was properly attached so what's the big takeaway here well i guess there's two takeaways number one if you have a penetration and a fire separation wall it's a good idea to have an intumescent fire stop collar installed there. These things cost about 20 to 30 bucks. Uh, it's not a big deal to pick one up. And then to put it in, the most important part is that it's properly fastened to the wall. If you just use drywall screws, it's, it's not gonna do anything. It's basically useless. It's gonna expand itself right off the wall. It's gonna push itself off there with all this foam expanding and it's not gonna do a darn thing. So from now on, when I inspect homes and I see these installed, I'm going to be looking for big screws that I suspect are going into wood or a screw that looks like it could be a toggle bolt. I mean, of course, from a home inspection perspective, there's no way that I'm going to know 100% for sure that it's properly installed unless I actually pull the fasteners out. And I'm not going to do that during a home inspection. But if I see tiny little drywall screws, I can just know right off the top of my head instantly, boom, that's wrong. Uh, and it's fixing it is going to be pretty simple. Put some toggle bolts in there or put some big wood screws in there if there's something to screw into. So that concludes our fire stop testing and I thank you for watching.